So they, caught, they, they called me up and, and, and I'm like, oh, what's the matter? It was late at night. You know? I was like, what's the matter? And he said, how do you flush the toilet? Because it was an Eastern, to- <laughs> it was an Eastern toilet, right? They're asking me how to- And so mm-hmm. we're all sitting around making tea, and she's got the glasses there on a, on a tray, mm-hmm. right? And they have this uh, this habit of how they do this stuff. So thing, and a, a goat comes in because right? oh. the, the animals are in the house, right? And a goat comes in, and starts licking the glasses. <laughs> so I'm sitting, I'm like, wait a minute. Now I'm going to drink tea out of this, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know. I'm trying to think of it logically, and I'm saying, oh, maybe when they pour the tea in there, it's too hot, it will kill the. I can't say anything, right? Yeah. I can't say, hey, look, there's a goat <laughs> drinking from my glass. For them, for them, it's just normal. And then yeah, I remember the first time when I sat down, when I went to actually ask for my wife's hand, uh-huh. right? I was sitting, at that time, I didn't know the animals were in, inside the house. So I'm sitting there, right? And we're eating, all of a sudden, I hear, <laughs> <laughs> I hear this like, so I'm looking around, and it was just me and her father, and there was one other guy there, right? And then I realized that there was a buffalo in the room right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about Ood. <laughs> you know, and I was like, wow, you know, this is uh, it's amazing. So I mean, uh, you know, I used to, I mean, they were, they had their own, what they considered to be clean. Yeah. You know, it wasn't that they were dirty for them, it was their way of life. And, yeah. and for me, you know, I just was going along with it, basically. You know, and then one day, it <clears throat> just hit me, like really hit me, like wow. a ton of bricks, you know. And I'm telling you, I went down to, I, I, my, I, was in, I went down to something like 46 kilos. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Half of what I weigh now. Uh, or, so, but how, how long had you been in this, in this kind of like uh, ecosystem before oh, that? A few years. A few years. So yeah. you were fine for a while. Well, I wasn't fine. I went through some other illnesses. I got, I got uh, hepatitis. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, yeah. some people think, you know, that, that I can just go to the jungle. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to venture out there and just like be, like you get like malaria, you can get like this and Oh, I told you, I went to, when I went to Africa, that was my idea. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can just go out there and live with nature, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, and the, and the guy who lives there, who lived there uh-huh. in Kenya, uh, he told me, are you crazy? He said, you can't. He said, I, he said I would, even vaccinations are not going to help you here. Because wow. I got all kinds of vaccinations, of course, before I went, right? Yeah. You know, malaria and typhoid and yellow fever, all this stuff, right? Yeah. And, and, and they were just saying, there's so many different strains here that, you know... That it's not going to help. It's not going to help. And yeah. the people living, and living there, right, they already have, and their immune system has already coped with that. Yeah. Right? They had natural Im- you know, immunization. Yeah. Right? Where I'm coming from, you know, from America. New Jersey. New Jersey. <laughs> And here I am, you know, and, and, and he's like, forget it, you know, and I was like, I totally went to the, the hut of one of these with the Messiah, I visited the Messiah, uh-huh. and so the guy's making some kind of drink that they make with some leaves they get from a tree, you know, and the guy's like, here, do it, and I'm like this, and the guy's like, hit my hand, and the other guy, he said, don't drink that, I said, you crazy? What? Uh, oh, he said, you drink that, he said, you'll probably be dead in a couple of months. Really? Oh, yeah, he said, because that, they're used to this stuff, he said, this stuff is, you know, he said, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, not anyone just come out here and live like this. Then I, the realization hit me that, you know, that's not going to, it's not going to work, you know. And, you know, so, um, so it, yeah, it's true. And then with Egypt, you know, even with the, it's, it wasn't as rural, it wasn't as, as primitive, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, when I went there, uh, they didn't have, they had one light bulb in the house, right? The electricity go on and off like every other day or something like that. Yeah. You know, the way they cooked, uh, they would cook on a, uh, on a, they call it a kaloon. It was like a, it's like a barbecue type thing, right? Mm-hmm. And they put wood underneath there, and then no, no bathroom inside the house, right? I mean, this is the way, you know, no fridge, no refrigerator. So you had to go out to the outhouse. Yeah, to go out. I mean, of course, my house had a bathroom. Did that right? inside the house? Inside, yeah. Where oh. I lived, because I, I built a house there. You had right next to them. Luxury. I, I, I put in the luxury. There, <laughs> although I still share the thing of not having electricity all the time, stuff like that. Yeah. But the bathroom, it was an eastern toilet, but it was inside. You know, right. I couldn't. I couldn't get used to going outside. I mean, they used to just go out to the in the cornfields and 
wow. you know, put back where they ate into the <laughs> into the ground. Right? Easy, easy fertilization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, you know, they they lived a perfectly normal life, you know. But the problem is when they interacted with progress, right? Right. And all progress actually invaded them. That's when things started to go haywire, and then they start down on pills. You know, instead of one, you know, before they weren't they weren't getting sick, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden they start getting sick because they're eating all this, you know, Can't processed food, these kind of things. Yeah. And so then they, you know, they, they they take so many pills there. It's like unbelievable. You know? It's funny. It's funny. So That's yeah, and, I, and one day I came, you know, and I was uh, it hit me. I didn't know what it was. They didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I had a fever for two weeks straight, every wow. single day. All day, all night. Wow. Yeah. I had to keep on like jumping in out of the shower. I'm taking these antipyretic things and all this stuff. Wow. And, and, uh, and my body just went, you know, went haywire. Wow. And so, alhamdulillah, you know, thank, thank, thank Allah for uh, New Jersey. getting over it. <laughs> no, actually, a doctor there found it eventually. After I went to five doctors, then I went to one. Right. And he found it. And, and he's like, yeah, he's like, at first I thought I had AIDS, I'll be honest with you. Really? Yeah. That's what they thought too. That must have been insane. I know, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, that, that was really big in those times, though, wasn't it? Like okay, it had just started when I left America. It, it just like started to the you know, main to like, spread. You know, like terror, people terrified. Yeah, so I left in '89. Yeah. And that's when it started to become known, yeah. right? And it started as, a, as a, you know, as a, it was spreading. All kinds of people were all kinds getting of people, it. Yeah, yeah. All, kinds yeah. all kinds of people were dying from it. And itself. from Africa, right? Uh -huh. What's that? It came from Africa. Uh, that's what they say. I, yeah. I haven't read the, you know, the, the history of AIDS, but, uh, but that's what they're saying, yeah. And so, I mean, you know, it's just like, so after that, since that time, I've been pretty fortunate, actually, because I haven't had any real, uh, you know, uh, flare-ups, except for maybe a joint here. My eye there, something like this. Right. Just except for a couple of years ago, that's when it hit me. I don't know what happened. I lost it. But the the official diagnosis was just like an autoimmune. Yeah. Well, at that time, when they were saying that, what he called he called it collagen's disease. That's what the guy called it. Wow. Right. But they did not have the names that right now. If you look up in, the, in uh, Wikipedia, you'll find there are eighty different types of autoimmune disease. There are diseases that we didn't know were actually autoimmune. We had other names for them, like psoriasis. Right. Right. That's autoimmune. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so there's so many different autoimmune diseases. You know, it's unbelievable. And uh, and I wasn't eating, you know, processed food. I was eating very natural food from my own garden, from my own field, my own so farm. So what actually? I mean, what actually caused the the, the dysentery? Well, the, the 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 doctor said to me, it either has to come from the water or the food. So we'll take your pick, one of those. I was working in Cairo, you right. know, and I, and I, at times I did have to buy something to eat there. So it could have been that guy from there. Right, but uh, alhamdulillah, it's an experience, and uh, well, thanks for I, sharing that story. I mean, that's that's quite uh, you know, like quite haunting. You know, the experience must have been, and the, I'm sure the viewers, uh, you know, they they because some some people, you know, they want to go out there and just you know, just like I want to go into the jungle and you know, in Vietnam, and I just want to do. Yeah, it's not like the movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like the movie, not you know, like Dr. Movies. Livingston, I presume. No, it's not like that. You know? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's it's much more. And and you would think that oh, it's the animals that are the problem, right? Right. You have to be even careful of the animals, right? But really, it's much simpler than that. <laughs> you know, one bite from a mosquito, you know, and they have so many different strains of malaria. Wow. You know that the the guy that I had told me, I'll never take another. Uh, Vaccine, uh, you know, malaria vaccination. Because they have, it's useless. He said it's useless, you know, because they, you don't know what you're going to get, you know. So the best thing is just to keep the mosquitoes off you. You know, Sheikh Nu used to give me pills yeah. every time before we went to the Far East. Yeah. He had that. that what, what's it? Uh, the quinone or something? Something quinone like that, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was a malaria pill. He said, take this today and then take it, I think it was 10 days later or mm -hmm. something like this. Yeah. And then we thought that that was like kind of like the magic bullet against malaria, but you know, thank God we didn't catch anything out there. Yeah, yeah. no, no, it's not, there's no magic bullet out there, I can tell you right now. That's, okay, that's and what's this? This is an anti malaria. This is uh, anti, <laughs> anti, uh, anti, anti malaria perfume. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what's good about the uh, uh, you know, aromatic uh, treatment and, uh, you know, and natural cures, right? Uh -huh. Is that it does work, honestly. Really? I, I believe yes. I believe natural cures. I believe that if you if you are stress free, right, and aromas help you help you with that, don't they? Yeah. Of course. And so, you know, it's it's uh, <clears throat> it helps a lot. You know, if you just live as natural as you can, don't overeat 
you know, don't stuff your face <laughs> with all kinds of food. Yeah. Right. I mean, I was I actually had been a vegetarian since I was 18 years old. No kidding. Yeah. 18 until until I actually went to Egypt. Uh huh. Right. And when I went to Egypt, right, I went. I was invited to dinner. Right. right? And I told them I don't eat meat. And I think they were going to spend. They were going to punch me out. I think. <laughs> Because they're like, what's wrong with it? How rude is this guy? Yeah. You know, saying he doesn't eat meat. Yeah, you because know, that's the highest honor you they can, can bestow. Them. I guess yeah, yeah. is the highest the class of food is the meat, right? Right. And so when I said that, especially when they slaughter something specially for you, exactly. And, and then, then you say, I don't need any meat. Yeah, the topping on <laughs> the topping on the cake was when I told them no sugar in my tea. <laughs> so, so they only put three teaspoons in. <laughs> Only three teaspoons. <laughs> Only three in a, in a cup this big, right? So normally it would be like half the cup would be full of sugar. Yeah, yeah it's like have a little tea with your sugar, basically. Yeah. Because well, mm-hmm. they love sugar. Wow. You know? But then I realized actually why they love sugar so much. Because the tea that they make out there, it's not like they, you know, they call like the watery tea, you know, with the tea bags. No, no. <laughs> they pour actually the tea into a, uh, a canica, you know, the, 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 the metal thing with the with a handle, yeah. they put it on the fire actually. But what they were doing actually, they didn't want to spend money on the canica, so they would just take an empty can, mm-hmm. right? And basically weld or screw a handle on that, and they put it on a fire. Right. And they put the tea in there, let it boil, right? That tea you cannot drink without sugar. It becomes like, like black ink. It right? all becomes so black. But I tell you what, I'll be honest with you, it's delicious. Really? If you just put a little bit of sugar in there, mm-hmm. it is delicious, really. But then when you start, like, see your head is spinning because from, I mean, that's like loaded with caffeine. Uh, yeah, it's, it is loaded and uh, I, mean, I would never drink, all, see, they used to drink it all day and night, but for me, no, I wouldn't do that. Right. You know, I'd have like maybe one cup after, uh, after lunch or something like that. Yeah. And that was it. That was, I couldn't drink that, but it tasted very good. I remember when I first moved here, I remember you found me, I, I was actually complaining about the first accommodations that you provided. <laughs> you? I was, no. I was actually quite, uh, quite like, distraught but when he showed the second I was like well, what is that and I met this brother from that I had met in New York in the in the Mejlis. Okay. he said no you're my guest you have to spend the night in my house and you know you just come with me I said oh thank god you know this guy he saved me you know <laughs> from shaky habs of come with this <laughs> and we're not in the middle of the jungle I, I, know, but I went to his place mm. it was much worse <laughs> Like you remember the old, it was like uh, down the street, you know, like before the shop, something, you turn left. Yeah. It's like one of these, oh, I don't think that building exists anymore. <laughs> it's like quite possible. I think it's like the new, uh, what do you call it, like the castle or something is built there now. Okay. But it was like uh, the walls were damp. It was uh, the, the shower was this, uh, like this thing you had to light a fire underneath or something like this. Okay. I went there, I was like, I was like, oh my God, then I couldn't be rude and say, I don't want to stay in your place after I was so relieved and delivered after he invited me. Yeah. So I spent the night there anyway. Then you know what happened that night, you know, to like complete the trial, complete, I had a sore throat, I was sick, you know, I had a wet dream. Oh. You know. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I could. I mean, in your sleep, what can you do? It's just, it happens. I wasn't married. It was like uh, yeah. Okay. So okay. I had a wet dream. He was still sleeping. I didn't want to wake him up. So I go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, how do I take a shower now, right? Yeah. There was this thing. You need to put a fire. There was a place. I said, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. I didn't yeah. know how to make that thing work. I just made tayamum. Okay. And I just prayed. Okay. Then the next morning, I met one of the one of the local fukaha. Right. I okay. said, you know, I, this is what happened. I came from New York. I had mm. a sore throat, and I couldn't sleep in the second because it was very cold and so forth. Okay. So I went to this brother's house, but then this happened, and I needed a shower. So there, I was already sick. He said, no, that's not that's not valid. You can't do that. This is haram. I was like, I mean, you know, okay, fine. You know. But. Uh, Later, what reminded me of this whole story is that later you found me another room, and you remember Sheikh Ekram, right? Yes, of course. Of From course. Mosul, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. said you got to go and, uh, you know, stay with Sheikh Ekram. He was actually in a, what was considered to be like, you know, very modern, high class, uh, high class yeah. building, <laughs> Abu Rami's building yeah. at, at that time, right? Yeah. And he used to make exactly the tea that you just brought up. Uh, he was black. in the water can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the water can. But the tea, though, I tell you, he gave me this tea. Yeah. When I showed up, 
he had this, like you said, they used to call it ink, you know, like black ink. Yeah. And the, half the cup was sugar, and then you just put a little bit of tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that, and then I, I went to this uh, this uh, Maulid after that. And they were asking me, so where are you from? How are you doing? I'm like, guys, you know, this guy, <laughs> he gave me this cup of tea. I can't talk, I'm about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I know where I'm from, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> With that tea. <laughs> yeah, was, but the, the thing about that tea is though, I mean, and I don't use sugar. And even when I was in, in America, uh -huh. I never drank this Pepsi and all that stuff. And, you yeah. know, I was a water guy, and, you know, and, 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 you know, not, and no refined sugar. Right. right? Uh, but that tea without sugar, you can't drink it. No, you would, I mean, you would probably like vomit. Yeah, something. you can't drink it. And yeah. it, actually, when you taste it, the tea is so strong that you really can't taste it. It's almost like some of your blends here. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like you can't. Up, yeah. You can't taste the. You can't taste the the, the sugar actually in the yeah. tea. Yeah. Because it's sort of like the the, the base, <laughs> the base note of the tea, right? Just absorbs the you know the the the, the notes of the sugar, yeah. and you're just tasting the tea. But it's 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 actually drinkable. Right. This is the thing, you know. Otherwise, there's no way you can drink that stuff. Believe me. I mean, I can't. No I personally, I can't drink it with or without. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Oh, you are. So I have one cup of coffee in the morning, yeah. and then after that, I'm done for the day. If I have any more, yeah. I, every time when I make this mistake, it's like the same story. It's like uh, racing thoughts, yeah. palpitations, yeah. shallow breathing. I'm very sensitive to caffeine. Wow. Very so sensitive. Then you've got to stay away from that. I can't drink. Yeah, it. I told you. My my body's the opposite. Caffeine doesn't. Nothing. No, it doesn't really do anything to it. It doesn't keep me awake. It doesn't. If uh, I was you, I would be downing. I love coffee. I mean, yeah, but I know that there's still, even without that, there are some other, you know, that, that, you know, it's not beneficial in some ways if you overdo it. Right? So, I mean, it, you know, in terms of. You from the, like, the acrylamide and these kind of things? Yeah, not, not that, because that's a very minimal. But right. you know, I'm just saying the effects, there are other effects that may have just from the caffeine itself, you know, from that, that particular thing right. and so I, I try to stay with my I, I'm the same way I have one cup in the morning uh -huh. and then I, I'm, I'm okay you know but it's not like I need that cup and not that cup I'm not going to be able to get through the day like some people I say well and they say I have, to, I have work tonight give me some some coffee yeah you yeah. know and when I was in America I used to drink on my way to work I used to drink a black coffee I used to drink a black yeah. now of course American coffee is not like the coffee here obviously right. Right. There, it's uh, like not really coffee. You now that I drank, I drank the coffee here, right? You know, it's uh, it's uh, nothing like that. But anyway, so yeah, you're saying that this is roughing it, but it's nothing like the jungles. No, it's right? nothing like the jungles. Yeah, and I remember that one time some visitors came. I think maybe around the same time, and I used to have, of course, you know, oh, you contact me if anything's wrong, need anything, you know, because <laughs> it's new to them, right? Yeah. So they 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 call me up, and 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 I'm like, oh, what's the matter? It was late at night, you know. I was like, what's the matter? And he said. How do you flush the toilet? Because it was an eastern, to <laughs> it was an eastern toilet, right? They're asking me, how do you flush the toilet? <laughs> how do you use this thing? And I'm like, well, squat. Is that, you, know, <laughs> you forgot that. And then just take some water and pour it in there. That's yeah. it, you know. But we are so conditioned, yeah. right? I bet you most people don't know how the flusher actually works in a toilet. <laughs> and that's why I didn't know what to do when they came with an eastern toilet. And now, of course, you know, where we're living now, there are no more eastern toilets, I think. Right. Yeah. I but mean, I think everyone's the, changed the, the research now shows that using an Eastern toilet mm -hmm. is, is good for you on many, many levels. Oh, yeah, it's much But yeah. now they're selling Sounds these right. contraptions mm -hmm. to make it where uh, you actually, when you're, when you're sitting on a Western toilet, it's like your body is in the same shape as yeah. if you're sitting on an yeah. Eastern toilet, mm -hmm. just because of the, uh, you know, the ease with which you empty everything. Well, the out. position of your organs, too, here. Yeah. You know, that position of your organs, yeah. I mean, yeah. also, it's, it's actually, if as a public toilet, it's much more much sanitary, sanitary. Yeah, yeah. right? It's healthier than... Yeah, imagine sitting. sitting somewhere where, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know so, well, you know, since we're talking about this subject... <laughs> Why don't we move on to the... Something uh, more beautiful. Yeah, and, uh, toilets, I mean, and perfume, they go together like a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, speaking of that, do you have any... Did you, do you, is it possible to make an air freshener? Uh, from these, uh, of course, you could. Why not? Yeah, I mean, you could just uh, potentially you could just uh, take uh, like a bit of oil, like an attar, for example, mm. put it on a, on a, on a heater, you know, with a bit of water. A heater. You know, with like a candle underneath a candle. Uh, okay. Uh, oil heater, you know, yeah. like you put a candle, and then it's uh, you know it's just uh, like uh, it'll just like it. an air pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. Well, that's. Uh... 
Or you can use incense. Yeah, incense. Yeah, yeah. incense does the work. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. much easier. Yeah, and it's much healthier too. Hundred <laughs> percent. Than that spray stuff they sell. Hundred percent. No, yeah. the spray stuff. When I walk into a, any kind of public bathroom, mm. and I see those automatic uh, yeah. dispensing things, yeah. the first thing I do is I clog the the hole. I take to <laughs> toilet paper. I clog up the hole, and then I turn it towards the wall. So if it sprays, it doesn't throw the paper off. Okay. Because I can't breathe. I mean, I'm very sensitive to synthetic smells. Mm. I can't handle them. I can't. It just happened to me this weekend. I was in this uh, Italian restaurant, you know, coincidentally, and uh, you feel like you feel like you're losing your breath. It's like, mm. you, you, do I stop breathing and then just choke, or, or, or breathe this in and then choke <laughs> anyway? <laughs>